here we are back at the bench and uh, I'm gonna try and keep this video a little short uh, just wanted to get one video in you know before the end of the year and um, you know, tomorrow's Christmas Eve and then uh, we have Christmas and then you know all of a sudden boom it's New Year's I'm gonna be a little busy I've been a, a, a lot busy um, so let me take a minute out a second to just wish everyone Merry Christmas and if you're not a Christmas oriented person um, happy holidays whatever your holiday is have a happy one um, me we Tammy and I we celebrate Christmas got a tree in the living room and all that good stuff yeah, it's about to get a little busy. You know, tomorrow night I come home and we go on a drive and gifts and all that stuff. I just want to talk about a couple of things that are going on, show you some stuff. You know, you, you saw the penguin, right? Penguins, they're, they've been around, you know, for the holidays I had multicolored penguins, uh, maybe six different colors. I've been sending them out. They've been received well. But then uh, then I got these guys. Got to turn them sideways so it fits into the frame. Um, it's, a it's a, what do you call it, a stress reliever thing. I'll be sending some of these out with uh, some of the larger parcels. Obviously, he's like huge, so he's not going to fit into a small priority box. Anyway, I thought he was pretty neat. Put my logo on there. Anyway, so uh, earlier I was reading uh, online, which uh, can be good or can be bad. And it was a thing with, um, you know, Arkansas stones. Yeah, I love Arkansas stones. You've seen my video on the uh, surgical black. And uh, this is one that doesn't come out too often. This is a uh, 1950s uh, uh, Norton uh, translucent. I got the little bear logo, kind of dig that. Um, when I got it, it was very yellowed. And you can still see in the sides and maybe on the bottom, you can still pick up some of that yellow. Anyway, there's this whole discussion on like, you know, butterscotch, um, Arkansas stones. <sighs> the stones that are in this class of stone, the, the super dense Arkansas stones, come in a lot of colors, okay? You do some reading, they, they come in all types of colors, black, brown, yellow, whatever, some of them, whatever. Um, yeah, so some of them are going to be like yellow, yellow, brown, and, um, and some will be black, like my surgical black, and some will be like another kind of brown, and some are like wavy colors and happy colors and confetti colors, <laughs> maybe not confetti. But um, it doesn't mean anything, you know. It, it, it's just, you know, whatever. The color is white. All right, the top became less yellow after I lapped. It was new old stock. It was never used. It wasn't soaked in oil or anything like that. But uh, I'm thinking the oxidation sort of gives it that yellow-like sort of tone. And, uh, yeah, sure, some are going to be like brown caramel all the way through and through because that's the color of the stone. And, you know, if you read, you do science um, studying. You find out that the reason that these are pearly white when they're pearly white is um, there's a moisture content and the quartz crystals and diffraction of light, blah, 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 blah. You come up with a white stone. <coughs> impurities in the stone give a color. Yes, the colors in them are from impurities. In other words, there is going to be the highest concentration of silica in a stone that's all white. Now, you're talking about like fractions of a percent here because you don't need a whole lot of anything to make like the light diffract so it appears to be a different color. So, um, and, and just because you have the highest amount of silica, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have the best stone. It, it's all like this, it's this typical online circle jerk bullshit, like where everybody's a fucking genius and a poobah and wants to know everything and you know, I get angry because when I came along there was a lot of this stuff and I got really confused and then I just sort of like took out a machete and chopped away all the crap and kind of went out on my own um I got out of like camps of like where you know you got guys that follow this guy on the forum because he knows everything and then there's another guy and he has his crew and then you have these two squads and they're like butting heads over just stop man all it does is push people out of having a lot of fun, all right, because it, it's shaving, it, it's a razor, you use it to cut hair off your face, and as long as the razor does that, then seriously, who the fuck cares if this stone has 99.9999999% silica, and the next one has one hundredth of a percent less, who, who cares, please don't try and tell me that you know one is going to make sharper edges, because there's so much more to go along with an edge than 
the theoretical sharpness that people yammer on about. You know, I just read another thread where um, he the, the guy has to have like this 0.1 micron diamond edge, otherwise he can't shave. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Seriously. You know, that's just people pontificating with their egos. And Anyway, this stone right here, amazing, amazing, amazing Arkansas stone. Um, it's in the class with my surgical black. Obviously, it's not as big. And, you know, and it hasn't been with me like since forever. So I, I'm going to always favor the surgical black. But this stone right here is is, is really, you know, something to behold and there's a lot of buzz right now on you know all different types of arkansas stones i may actually pick up one of the canadian ones just to you know give my mind uh, a break on thinking about like what it could possibly be about that stone that you know makes the people selling it think it's a thing to do because honestly you can you can go to dan's or you can go to uh, uh naturalwetstones.com david He's a guy I would normally go to and ask for, you know, whatever you want to look for it and you get it. And, and the price is nominal. And they're great stones. They do a great finishing job. I just, they're not my favorite to work with because they're kind of dead. They don't really have the feedback thing. They're a one trick pony, really. They're not that versatile. Um, the softer arcs are a little, you know, better for like earlier work and mid range, but these super hard jobs. They're finishers. They're uber finishers. I, for me to get out of this stone, what it's capable of doing, I need to bring on a highly refined edge. I can't come in here with just any old edge because then it does something, but it's not really getting me there. You know, and then there's the whole thing about burnishing. <laughs> and that's like another thing that's going on. People like, uh, they're almost arguing about whether or not you have to burnish. I, I, I don't burnish arcs. All right, I, I've been that route. Uh, first of all, it's not even burnishing, but I don't polish my stone. You can see here, I have a matte surface. If you've seen my black arc, it has a matte surface. Um, I do not need or want a high polish. I don't like what the high polish surface does. I've gone back and forth. I've put the edges under a microscope. I've gone back and forth and compared side by side. I get a better return on this. That's it for me, you know, um, I prefer this, you know, if you're a high polished guy and you think that's the bee's knees, all power to you. I said it a million times. I only shave with my edges. I don't need to shave with somebody else's edges. What somebody else does, thinks, says, doesn't really impact me. Personally, I think that whole circle jerk on the burnishing thing, I think it's just off-putting. I think more people would pick up arcs if they didn't think they had to like lap the thing for four years to get it to be like a mirror reflective surface. And you know, especially since I found out that you don't need to do that. So it is that. Anyway, very nice stone. If you see one of these, pick them up. Well worth the price of admission. They're not that common. You know, the old stock Nortons, especially with the bear. You know, the old stuff. See them too often. Anyway, moving along. <laughs> you saw this um, out on the block when I started. And you're probably like, what is that? This is what I believe to be a vase again. Now... Because there has never been a labeled Vazgian or whatever, the whole term is like, there's a lot of bullshit mixed in there. There is, This is a slate, and it comes from France. And this particular one comes from a place in eastern France. Uh, the town is like Strasbourg or something like that. Definitely a slate. Definitely French. Um, not at all like any other type of slate I've honed on. Um, been around uh, a long time and I've read a bunch of threads where people argue about the existence of these stones but the reality is this is French it came from France it was like in an old house in France so it wasn't like somebody transported it there it may seem to look like a Welsh purple slate it is not even close to that if you look at it in person you can pick up an almost holographic type of thing going on in here that does not exist in those simple purple slates from uh, Wales, whatever their origin is, but they're sold as uh, Lynn Melanillans or something. I don't know. This is not that. It's also not a Vermont slate. I've had a boatload of Vermont slate. It's nothing like any of them. It doesn't look like it past the initial visual. Um, the patterning is, patterning is totally different, but there's a similarity. I think a lot of people do have Vermont slates and they call them Bosgans because there's no stamp or well, you, you don't know you just don't know 
Anyway, I picked up a couple of these. One or two of them are going to wind up in my store. And um, I basically, I met somebody online from France. Does like uh, picking. You know, he goes out and picks up stuff and sells it, uh, usually locally. But anyway, it's a long story. So I mentioned uh, the purple stones. And, you know, there's La Lunes. There's a special stone for good razors. Um and there's lots of discussion, and everybody wants to be an expert, and, you know, we're at a point in history where your sample size is never going to be big enough to really qualify anyone as the final say-all. You would need to, like, get somebody from the factory that cut those stones, what have you, to uh, back it up. And even at that, you know, I, I don't know who, what I, who I would believe. Anyway, so, um, yeah, it's a Vosgian and Slurry Stone. Who's got them, right? I do. <laughs> so anyway so uh, i started experimenting uh with this stone and it's literally freaking awesome if you use it correctly if you don't use it correctly it's either meh or uh counterproductive but i um i like taking this for a ride this way i do some slurrying right and i'm not really shy with the slurry and i'm not no, no diluting no bully cot no no crazy bullshit you know I just uh, get this going. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm actually bringing the edge down a little bit, but I'm also leveling it out. I'm getting it, like, prepped in a way. Now, if I took this and I did dilute it and I did get it down to, like, close to clear water, or actually clear water, I would have an edge, you know, and uh, it would be sharp. And... Uh, yeah, I could go on about my life. I could shave with it and things would be fine. It's a typical slate. The feedback is not great. It's, it's not really talking to you, but but it's nice, you know? Um, oh, another pearl of wisdom I, I read uh, on the internet this morning. A uh, guy said, oh, it's a slate. And uh, so therefore, uh, it won't absorb any, anything because slate isn't porous. Slate is porous. The more polished the surface is, the less porous it's going to be. All right? But slate will take on water. Yes, I know it's used as a roofing thing, but, you know, they, they polish it down and certain types are less prone to absorbing water than other types. But slates will take on water. They will take on oil. They will soak things in. It does happen. I guess the moral of the story is just because somebody on a shaving form said something, don't accept it as fact. Even if you think the guy knows everything, chances are he doesn't. That includes me. So go look up stuff. So anyway, uh, the next phase in this involves this stuff here this is a um, honing medium an oil that uh i've put together i have these on my etsy page now and um you know i don't like oil i don't like it on my fingers what have you this is not a petroleum oil it's not thick it doesn't cling to me it doesn't creep under shit it doesn't like really piss me off or stink like three in one or anything else and it doesn't have that fake feel like um I think it's a silicone-based thing. Who makes it? I don't know. Uh, Smith's, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, so this stuff, right, it's water-soluble. It's natural. It's organic. I don't know. It's free-range. It's fucking happy oil. Um, it's not petroleum, so it doesn't bug the, uh, the rubber, my honing block. And... Uh, cleans up with water. It's like water soluble. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't leave like that greasy, shitty feeling that I associate with most oils. It's still not my favorite medium, but I've been messing with this for years and I've tried it with a bunch of stones because I like to test stuff extensively if I'm going to sell it. So I started using it with this purple thing. Because the report was from this guy where he was when he picked these stones up that most people there use some kind of oil to sharpen their razors on it. So I did the thing with the slurry in the water beforehand. And then I came to this. And, and let me tell you, I can't explain what goes on here. But using the oil buffers it a little bit and takes out any of the artifacting. Well, not 100%, but this edge of this stone with water, water slurry is going to have some like toothy bite to it. And it may not leave your skin feeling so freaking wonderful. Like if you took a shower right after you shave, the shampoo runs down your face. You might be like, ow, that doesn't feel good. The oil mellows it out. 
it also seems to bring up another level of refinement. I'm not going to say sharper. I think basically what it does is help perfect the edge you established on the previous session on slurry. I know that's deep, right? But, um, choking. Anyway, uh, yeah, this stone. Uh, like I said, I got three of them, I think. I'm going to keep this one. The other two will go up probably sometime in January. Um, they're killer. If you're looking for a finishing stone that could do a little bit more, like say you want a stone that covers 8K and 12K and then it goes further on, I would say this rivals like anything off of those stupid Gok 20s. I, I hate those stones, but um, I would I would shave off of this and nine, 10 out of 10 times before I went with a, a Gok 20 edge. Could do without that thing. Um, I know people love them. Sorry, I'm not trying to insult you. It's just, well, I have experience with it and I don't like it. And I like this stone better. This stone is actually amazing compared to that Gok or even a 12K Naniwa. It really is an exceptional, very special, very kind of unique stone in the world of uh, natural whetstones because it does have some latitude. It is fairly easy to use. And uh, yeah, can't beat that with an ugly stick. And the oil thing is very helpful. If you use Arkansas stones, it's something to consider. I've experimented with a ton of stones, all right? I have not had any ingress of this oil into any stone that didn't just wash out or wash off. In other words, every single time I used it, the stones cleaned up perfectly fine. No staining, no bullshit. But that's my testing. You may wind up with a stone that takes some on and it stays there and your stone gets darker. I don't know. Just one of those things. But anyway, uh, good stuff that Vazgian really, really impressed with it. And uh, yeah, so that's that. I got a new codicule and I'm not ready to go too far with this right now. But this is probably the hardest less lad I've ever lapped. And it is awesome to hone on. It's got a nice quality to it. I think you can start to see like the sheen it's picking up right after lapping it. It wasn't like that. But after about 20, 30 edges, it's starting to come around. And um, it's not getting high polish. It's still matte. But um, it really does a great job. I have a matching slurry stone for it. So that's pretty neat, right? Uh, raises I'm working on. I put that as a platform. I just did this last night. Big 9.8 weight. Uh, when I got it, um, it, the scales were completely trashed. These are the original scales. Cracked right through, and the original owner had put leather sleeves, one on each side of the scales. And then glued it down to stop the crack. I, I don't know what they were thinking. It was kind of ingenious and kind of like the most bizarre thing I'd ever seen. But I salvaged the scales with epoxy fills like you may have seen in my first uh, video where I rescued that one wade and did the hornoxy treatment. It's my very first uh, uh, video on this channel. Anyway, I did that. This is coming along great because the leather wraps were right where the toe went into the scales. The blade wound up with really excessive pitting. You can see some of it still there. Anyway, um, honing into the bevel took some time to clear. I had like major pitting down there, like pits literally through the bevel. Lost a little bit of dimension, maybe at least 32nd of an inch. Um, the, the backside is completely clear right now. And I have right over, I have right over here, I have one little dot that's sitting on the Shinogi. And uh, not have to live with it. You know, uh, I'm going to hone a little bit more. Maybe it'll clean up, but I'm not going to hone to, to remove that. It, it's way out of the way of the cutting edge, and it's fine. I also, this weekend, that was yesterday, day before, uh, was this one. Very, very nice blade. Um, wheat sheaf uh, cutlery. Scales are all whacked. I have some fissuring down here, but it seems solid. Uh, clean them up, press them flat. Uh, reinstalled uh, everything clean up the wedge wedge is looking good I uh, can't wait to hone this I, I had good feeling about this blade you know not too expensive picked it up on eBay with a minimum bid I was surprised when I got notification of winning anyway 
Uh, what else is going on? I got these scales to fix. I got another blade. I got this French blade I got to work on. And then I have this Wade. Nice frame back. This frame back came out of these guys. Not sure yet whether or not I'm going to save these or what. I have to figure it out. I got these on eBay. Won't be buying from that company anymore. These are crap. Okay. They're like 17, 18 bucks. It comes pinned. This is not a wedge. It's a spacer. Okay. Uh, it, the scales are supposed to spread out and, and bow back when you pin them. This doesn't do that. Nothing down here fits correctly. That, I guess for the price, I, I'm going to unpin it and then I'll have two good blanks. And I, I guess I shouldn't complain, but really like, like why? You know, it would be better if they didn't do the thing with the hardware. They gave me hardware too. Forget the hardware. Okay. Just sell me the blanks and drop the price down to like $12. It would be better because your craftsmanship over here, this is crap. Okay. You know what I'm afraid of? I'm afraid of people buying this on eBay and then restoring blades and using this stuff and then new guys buy them. And then all of a sudden in six months, the things are so warped that they won't close right or work correctly. Uh, I just wanted to do this quickly, and I think I probably went too long. That's life sometimes. So here we go. We got our penguins. All right, we got our penguins set up. And uh, anyway, Merry Christmas. Have fun. Do some honing through the holidays. Most importantly, spend time with your family because this is holiday time, and holidays are about your family. But, you know, you can fit some razors in there. So anyway, take care. If I'm lucky, I'll get another video done before the end of the year, but I don't think that's going to happen. So talk to you soon. See you next year. Have fun.